Hello, people of the internet. It's summertime, and that means garage sale season. I was recently shopping around, found myself a great deal on an original Nintendo and a stack of classic games. However, it didn't come with a power adapter, and the guy was selling it as is. So it's a little yellowed. Um, who knows what we got? So let's power it up and check it out. All right, we're gonna try out the copy of Super Mario Brothers 2 that we got with this console. Cross our fingers and see what we get. All right, no big surprise. Did not fire right up. All right, we're getting something. Let's try the old blow on the cartridge trip. Whoop. Okay. We are booting. That's great. That means the system itself is pretty much intact. Um, undoubtedly that 72 pin is really dirty. Like I said, the plastic is pretty yellowed. It's got some spots on it, almost like if it came from a smoker's house. Um, so I think the best thing to do at this point uh, is to clean it up, fix up that 72 pin, and try to make it look as new as possible. Okay, for those of you unfamiliar uh, with how to open the NES consoles, there's six screws on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's always a good idea to have a little container or something you can put your screws in so they don't roll off your workspace. Alright, once you've got all the screws removed, you should be able to just lift, lift the lid straight off. Can set that aside. There's that yellowing I was talking about. It looks pretty nasty. Alright, we got a lot of dust build up in here. Got a little voltage converter. Could definitely use some cleaning. Um, now, if you've got some compressed air, or air in a can or something like that. That's a nice way to kind of clean this up. Um, can't wake the baby, so we'll use other methods. Um, but for now, you can start by disassembling the shielding around here. Uh, looks like that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. Once you have those screws removed, the shield should lift straight up and can be set aside. 
Um, now if we want to pull this 72 pin out and give it a real proper cleaning, we're going to need to take this Nintendo apart uh, completely. Uh, the spring tray out, the board, uh, the whole thing. Um, now a lot of people online will say just buy a new 72 pin. Um, but in my experience they only last a couple of years before they're back to, to the way the originals are. Um, so I just clean the originals. Um, and usually I can get a longer lifespan out of it. Um, I use a trick. I kind of submerge, submerge it into white vinegar and just let it sit for a while uh, after a thorough cleaning of course and that kind of helps loosen up anything on the pins um, and then you wash it with a little uh, baking soda and water kind of neutralize the acid. It does a good job cleaning them up and bringing them back to as close to new as possible. Um, so let's keep going with tearing this Nintendo down. Uh, looks like we got another six screws uh, to pull this assembly out. Alright, now take note that the third screw, or the middle screw I should say, um, it's going to be a different color. It's going to be silver instead of the brass style used everywhere else. And those screws are a lot longer. Um, they hold the two halves together uh, and go straight through the board. Now uh, this tray you got to kind of slide forward and lift out because um, there is a lip here, I'm trying to get it in the camera, that holds uh, onto the bottom of the board. Now at this point it looks like we've got one, two screws left until we can pull the whole assembly out. Those are by the power board on both sides. Alright, I stand corrected. That's not a power board. That is where the uh, AV comes out. <clears throat> it just happens to be next to the little voltage converter that they have here. Now with all those screws removed, you'd be able to pull the board straight up, um, but we still got some cables that we're going to want to disconnect. Uh, the first two are for the controller. Um, I just use a little flat blade screwdriver to help me out. Okay, you're going to have one more underneath for power. Uh, you can see it on the camera right here, this little blue bar. Okay. Once you have the board out, there's going to be a shield on the bottom that can be lifted straight up. And your 72 pin on the back just pulls right off. Uh, there's a few spots that we'll clean. 
both sides of the connector on the main board where the cartridge sits on the 72 pin and then we'll submerge the whole thing in some white vinegar for a while um, to help get whatever our first cleaning process couldn't get off. I like using the eliminator. Uh, it's, it's just a nice easy to hold on to cleaner. Um, you may remember from one of my older videos that I have another one that I've modified to use with the Sega. Uh, works really well. Cleaning solution of choice is a little Windex. And then just, we'll just work it back and forth in the 72. All right. You can definitely see that there's still quite a bit of surface corrosion in there. So we'll take our white vinegar and just dunk it in. And I'll leave that for anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. Uh, the vinegar just really does a good job on the surface of those pins. And then like I said, we can neutralize the acid with a little baking soda and water. Um, and it'll almost be brand new. All right, so in order to clean the pins on the board, I find what works best is just a standard white art eraser. It doesn't leave any residue. Um, it grabs the dirt and grime pretty well off the board. See how well you can see the before. And then we'll do the after. Alright, we'll use a piece of paper towel here just to remove any of the rubber that's come off the eraser. I'm not sure how well you can make out the difference on the camera, but it's a heck of a lot cleaner. Okay, well while we're waiting for our vinegar solution to hopefully clean that 72 pin, uh, let's work on cleaning this nasty shell here. Um, we'll take the rest of the electronics out of the plastic base. Uh, take the controller ports out. There's two screws on the bottom. should be able to start pulling this apart. Alright, now when you're pulling these out, make note of how the cable curls so it's positioned to plug back in the board. Um, this quick loop here is player one. The longer cable is player two dust on there. Now to remove the power connector, there's a screw right there and a screw right under the cable there.
Alright, with all the electronics removed, <clears throat> we can really work on both halves of the shell, uh, wash them or treat them or whatever we need to do uh, to bring back some color and make it not look so grimy. Alright, so let's uh, move over to the sink. <clears throat> okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here um, is hit the top part of the shell uh, that looks the nastiest with just some generic Windex here. Make sure to get into all the cracks really well. Just let that sit for a second. <clears throat> then I'm going to hit it with just a little nylon bristle brush and hope to, to work free some of that dirt that seems really settled into the plastic here. We got a little piece of broken plastic here. We'll have to address that. All right, once you scrub the Nintendo, start to rinse it down. All right, that looks a lot better. And obviously it's a little wet right now, so it's glistening, but all those little splotches of brown and black that were on here seem to come right off. You know, a couple little scuffs, but not bad for a 20-year-old system. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna repeat the same process for the bottom tray. Um, be careful not to rough up the labels too much because they will come out. Uh, but let's just give it a good cleaning. Alright, like I said before, if you've got an air compressor or something like that, that works really well for drying this plastic off quick. Um, I do, but can't use it at the moment. Um, so, while we're waiting for that white vinegar solution to work its wonders on the 72 pin, we're also going to wait for these uh, two halves of the shell dry. So, we'll be back shortly. Alright, well, we're still waiting for the plastic shells to dry, uh, but it's been about 12 minutes uh, that our 72 pin has been sitting in the vinegar solution. Uh, and I think we're at a good spot here uh, where we can clean it up. So I've got just a little tub here with some standard household baking soda. I'm going to take this 72 pin out and just dunk it in to neutralize the acid. don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but there's a lot of little bubbles around there, uh, which is the baking soda doing its job. All 
and this is imperative that it's a hundred percent dry um, before you reconnect it <clears throat> and give any power to the Nintendo. You don't want to short anything out. Again, this is where an air compressor would really come in handy. Alright, so we're going to let this continue to dry. And in the meantime, we'll tackle cleaning some of the components on the inside. Got a nice bristle brush here. Um, just going to clean down all the boards. We'll clean the shielding. Then we're going to work on cleaning some of the components, like the buttons. Uh, I've definitely got some gunk on there. Got a paper towel here with a little Windex on it. And we're just going to work these buttons. Try to clean off some of the gunk. Definitely see it coming off on the paper towel. clean away any remaining dust on the board. We'll do the same thing for the game ports here. Obviously, we want everything to be nice and clean when we reassemble the Nintendo um, to make it look as good as possible. We got the little plastic cover for the controller ports here. Oh, looks pretty good. Tray looks pretty good, but we'll wipe it down anyways. Alright, and uh, we're obviously going to want to test a clean game instead of our newly clean Nintendo. So let's clean the board of this game. Alright, to start with I'm going to do the same method that I did on the Nintendo. I'm going to take our art eraser here 
and just clean up the contacts. You can literally see the dirt and smudge coming off the pins as you do this. Obviously when you're done, you want to clean up any of the rubber that's left behind. Alright, so if you ever notice <clears throat> when you go to power on a Nintendo that the system blinks and you see the game boot and then go away and then boot and go away and boot and go away, that's something called the 10 Nest chip. And that's a security chip that has to confirm between the game and the system in order to boot. That's this chip on the cartridge and this chip on the console. Uh, we'll be doing a video here in a little while uh, about how to bypass that chip so you can play uh, any different type of region game, uh, you can play homebrew games, and it just generally helps the system run better. Um, I'd say like 80% of the time growing up when you're blowing in a cartridge trying to get it to run, um, it's because this chip um, didn't initialize properly or didn't read the pins from the game properly and uh, allowed it to boot. Um, for all it knew, it was a counterfeit game in the system. So like I said, we'll be doing a video on that in the future. <clears throat> but now that we got our clean game, we can reassemble the cartridge. and we'll wait for that 72 pin to finish drying. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. I'm sure the 72 pin has had a pretty good chance to dry by now. Um, so we're gonna put together uh, the basics that we're going to need to test this out to see how well our clean and restore actually worked. Um, so let's start with the base shell and start assembling some components. We'll start with the power buttons. Just going to be two standard Nintendo screws. Next we'll drop in the two controller ports. Remember that the shorter cable goes on the left and the longer cable goes on the right. The shield just kind of uh, comes over the system like this. This takes the two 
silver beveled screws. Okay, we'll kind of route the wires like so. Now we'll take our board and reconnect the 72 pin. At this point, we should be able to drop the main board into the lower shielding. So We'll reconnect the power, the right side controller, the left side controller. We'll put the uh, game riser in, and it kind of just slides down over the 72 pin here. And the whole package should just nicely fit. back into the bottom shell, just like this. We'll put in these two long silver screws just to kind of hold it all together for testing. Remember this is the middlemost screw um, on this spring-loaded tray. The shorter ones are at the front and the back. The long silver is in the middle. All right. Let's put in our copy of Super Mario Brothers 2 that we cleaned and uh, see how it worked out. Okay, so if everything went according to plan, uh, this should fire right up as soon as we hit the power button. Perfect! Uh, so like I said earlier, you can go ahead and buy uh, new 72 pins, but I have a lot better luck uh, with just giving the, the original ones that ship with the console a good deep cleaning. Um, we'd soaked it for 10 plus minutes in vinegar, uh, neutralized it with a little baking soda and water. Um, and the proof is in the pudding. Seems to work great. So as always, uh, to put your Nintendo back together is the reverse of disassemble. I hope you guys learned something. Uh, hit that like button, hit the subscribe, it really helps out, and have a wonderful day.